Good evening. We are God's. We belong to Him. Our primary allegiance is not to a particular nation, kingdom, or institution, but to God. We belong to Him in those whose image we are made and whose law is inscribed on our heart. We must give back to God what is His. We give Him our love, our first fruits, and our very selves in union with Christ.
just sang, Shelter me, O God, you alone are my hope. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge the times we have not allowed the Lord to be our only hope, and have trust placed our trust in other realities, and ask the Lord for mercy and compassion. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him, and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him, and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake 
sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you know me, you know, you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that for the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling your work of faith and labor of love, an endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father. Knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might trap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man, and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus' teaching in the Gospel reading is as valid today as it was 20 years ago. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. Every Christian holds dual citizenship. Each citizenship has its own privileges and responsibilities. Normally our birth, or perhaps one's personal decision, makes us citizens of an earthly nation. But our baptism makes us citizens of the heavenly kingdom. Sometimes the two kingdoms overlap, but in the end, our earthly citizenship will finish while our heavenly citizenship will last forever. Even in our church funeral liturgies, it reflects that distinction. For a veteran, police, or firefighter, Normally, the U.S. flag breaks the coffin. How appropriate, since that person served our nation. But that U.S. flag is removed when the coffin enters the church, and it is replaced with the white funeral pall or cloth. It reminds us of our baptismal and hopefully our heavenly white garment as recorded in the book of Revelation. In God's eyes, we all are children of God, created in His image. All of us are equal in His eyes. Or as St. Paul states in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free person. There is not male and female, for you all are one in Christ Jesus. When we look at these two citizenships, it's obvious which citizenship is more important. Through the centuries, many saints and martyrs have taught us that 
that if we are ever forced to choose between the two, we must choose God, even if that decision brings suffering. Why? In Luke chapter 12, verse 8 through 9, Jesus said, I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God. This morning at Mass, we celebrated the feast day for St. Ignatius of Antioch, one of the early church bishops who lived in the early 100s, who chose death over denying Jesus Christ. In the year 1535, St. Thomas More, a man for all seasons, chose God's values over Caesar's values. Christ is reminding us that, as far as possible, we need to live out both of these citizenships responsibly. Let's start with the responsibilities of the heavenly citizenship, the more important one. Just as the Roman coin bore the image, image of the emperor who made that coin, so too the human person bears the image and likeness of God who created us. And as we heard in the last verse in today's Isaiah reading, I am the Lord, there is no other. And so, how do we pay our taxes, if I may dare say, to the heavenly IRS, so to speak? Giving to God what belongs to God means how well do we follow the life example of Jesus Christ in his life, in his suffering, death, and resurrection. Loving God with our entire being, and yes, loving our neighbor as ourselves, and obeying all of God's commandments, and heeding the teachings of his church. Do we really give sacrificially of our time, talent, and yet even treasure, all to build up the kingdom of God, the church, on earth? Remember this weekend is called World Mission Sunday. Every one of us is called individually by God to follow Him and fulfill a mission in life. And it differs with each one of us. As Pope John Paul II stated at the beginning of his papacy, it is essential for us to understand that Jesus has a specific task in life for each and every one of us. Each one of us is hand-picked, called by name, by Jesus. And in the need that if there is no one among us who does not have a divine vocation. World Mission Sunday not only living our own mission, but do we support the missions by prayer and by our financial support? But the duties of our earthly citizenship are just as real, although they will only last for our lifetime here on earth, not forever. Jesus sums them up by saying, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And Caesar, in this case, symbolizes the civic 
or political community. When God created us all, he created us to be interdependent on each other to live in community. And these communities come together to form civil society, and they provide us with many, many benefits. Public services, protection from crime and violence, and the opportunities for personal and family development. And so it is our strict duty of justice to give back to society through obedience to good and solid laws and active collaboration, like doing community service, and yes, even paying taxes. In this sense, patriotism is a virtue in which every Christian should excel, and we should be the most dependable and loyal citizens of all every day of our lives, but uniquely in the coming election. The church has an appropriate role and voice in society. Vatican II, in its document, Gaudium et Spes, the pastoral constitution of the church in the modern world, states in number 76, and I quote, it is only right, however, that at all times and in all places, the church should have true freedom to preach the faith, to teach her social doctrine, to exercise her role freely among men and women, and also to pass moral judgment in those matters which regard public order when the fundamental rights of a person the salvation of souls required. And thus, we as Catholics need to make that real effort to stay informed about the important moral issues facing our society. By being informed, hopefully it will enable us to vote intelligently and responsibly. Are we voting? Number one. And when we vote, will we vote to protect our religious liberty to speak out? Just like any group has the constitutional right to speak. Or are we allowing our right to slip away slowly. We are criticized at times as if we are supposedly imposing our views on others. But are not secular groups imposing their views or their values upon us? Every policy Every law is based on some value. And it is up to us as a society to determine what kind of value. We need to be informed with the mind and the true teachings of the church and to vote accordingly. We had the privilege recently to study the Bishop's Faithful Citizens document, which summarized ten points to consider. And in paragraph 92, it stated, the Bishop stated, not all issues are equal. These ten goals address matters of different moral weight, and urgency. Some involve entrenched
intrinsically evil act, which can never be approved. Others involve affirmative obligations to seek the common good. Unquote. I have printed in the bulletin in the past all ten points. But if you review those ten points, notice the first two points that the bishop lists deal with the fundamental life issue. That is intentional. The first point states, address the preeminent requirement to protect the weakest in our midst innocent unborn children by restricting and bringing to an end the destruction of unborn children through abortion. Last week, the U.S. bishops, which I print, reprinted, addressed that issue. Then the first point goes on in providing women in crisis pregnancy the support they need to make a decision for life. Refer to the bulletin today for once again a U.S. bishop statement supporting the second half of this first point. The second of the ten points is very interesting because they repeat once again what they said in the first point. Keep our nation from turning to violence to address fundamental problems. A million abortions each year to deal with unwanted pregnancies. But then it goes on to add euthanasia and assisted suicide to deal with the burdens of illness and disability the destruction of human embryos in the name of research, the use of death penalty to combat crime, and the imprudent resort to war to address international disputes. A more inclusive view of the various life issues. The third point of the ten points of the bishops deals with the sanctity of marriage and family life. The other following seven points address extremely important, necessary affirmative obligations to seek the common good, like health care, immigration, poverty, military strength, and the list can go on. These important issues we may debate and even degree, disagree with different policy strategies. But as the bishop states, we cannot disagree on the fundamental various life issues listed in the first two points. Isn't it interesting that even the Declaration of Independence recognizes this truth? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights that among them, among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. How interesting. The first unalienable right is life, then freedom. The great Anglican political thinker Edmund Burke and others have adapted it once said, all it takes for evil to triumph is for good men and women to do nothing. In today's world, where good and evil 
are still fighting it out. Let us do something. Let's give to God what belongs to God, nothing less. And yes, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Amen. St. Maximilian Colby. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, We offer our prayers to the one in whose image we are made and whose law is inscribed on our hearts. As the church celebrates World Mission Sunday, may the Lord strengthen and raise up even more missionaries to bring the light of Christ to all. And may all of us be more vibrant witnesses of Christ to all. Let us pray to the Lord. For the safety of all who protect us, for all medical personnel, and that Catholics will vote utilizing Catholic principles and morals in their decision process that will respect the dignity and life of all people, from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who feel they cannot be forgiven, may the grace of the Holy Spirit help them accept the forgiving mercy of God as well as the grace to forgive themselves. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our For abundant blessings on the Catholic Daughters of America, court number 2493, that they may share the love of Christ to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our For our personal intentions, including the sick and struggling, those who have died, including Father Carl and Huntfeld, may rest eternally in peace, and for the intention of the repose of the soul of Fernando Navarrez and Jose Isisco, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Father of all love and mercy, we humbly ask you to look favorably upon these, our prayers, and respond according to your holy will, which we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ the Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
for O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Maximilian Colby, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop, the order of bishop, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you as they're passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
participation in the heavenly things. We may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. This past Tuesday evening I learned we have a tradition here at the parish that I wasn't aware of, so it didn't get into the bulletin, but it will be next week. A tradition to post pictures of your loved ones and or the worship aids, the programs for the funeral service of all those who have died in the past year alone, since last November. So please begin to bring your pictures without the frames, making sure the picture has the name on the back you can reclaim your picture afterwards. The pictures in our worship aids can be brought back, uh, can be brought starting next weekend to the church, or put in the basket in the narthex, or to be dropped off at the parish office. They will go on display starting October 31st for about three weeks. And the parish book of the dead will be available for you to sign also for those who have died in the last as we've been announcing and announcing the festival, pick up your raffle tickets if you not have done so immediately after Mass. Remember the Virtue and Silent auction is running currently until October 25th. Naturally, we need more bidders. Please visit our website to make bids. This is the last weekend to, to sign up to pray outside the largest abortion clinic in the United States. Planned Parenthood, which is located on the Gulf Freeway. We ask you to simply stand peacefully, calm, and to pray. You are not expected to say anything to anyone, only that prayerful silence. You may wonder what half the effect that it does. Well, studies indicate most women and men who are visiting Planned Parenthood or those who work there are reminded by your prayerful presence of their own backgrounds of faith. And there is comfort even in a time of such discomfort. Our prayerful presence reminds people that abortion is not normal or natural or acceptable. And yet so many of these people feel trapped and are indeed comforted that someone does care for them for their unborn child. And for those of us who go and pray, it makes a powerful witness to ourselves and comfort. For those who physically cannot go, you can sign up to pray from your home. Next week in the Knights of Columbus, we'll be selling tamales, so get ready, buy them out, and remember to start collecting your items for the shoebox fairs for the seafarers program. Catholic Daughters will be collecting them for the next two weekends, starting next week. Well, as I mentioned, it's the 19th anniversary of the establishment of Fort 2493 here at St. Maximilian Colby. For your information, the Catholic Daughters of America is one of the oldest and largest volunteer organizations of Catholic women in the Americas. They were founded in Ethica, New York in 1990. What is their mission? Their mission is to embrace the principle of faith, working through love, in the promotion of justice, equality, and the advancement of human rights and human dignity for all. Their spirituality is to share the faith with other women, helping others through charitable acts in the spirit of Christ. We're not doing a membership drive, but consider and discern if you want to join them. So to the women, the Catholic daughters, I ask you to please stand as I give you a blessing. Blessed are you, Lord God of all mercy, who through your Son gave us a marvelous example of charity and the great command to love one another. Send down your blessings on these, your servants, the Catholic daughters of America, for 2493 who so generously devote themselves to embrace the principle of faith, working through love, and the promotion
promotion of justice, equality, and the advancement of human rights and dignity for all. Help them in their spirituality of sharing the faith with other women. And through their charitable acts in the spirit of Jesus Christ, which is always the heart of this organization. May they always be open to your abundant graces, so as to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ for his greater glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life.